So, hello. Um, yeah, welcome everyone to the October 2019 monthly webinar series from Phase One Industrial. Um, my name is Carsten Wieser. I'm Integrator Sales Manager for EMEA region at Phase One Industrial and I'm based in Cologne in Germany. At this webinar, we have invited uh, one of our integrating partners, uh, the company GGS from Germany. We have the pleasure to welcome Dr. Gerhard Kemper in today's webinar, uh, the CEO of GGS. Hi, Carl. GGS. Yeah, hello, Gerhard. Uh, GGS is integrating phase one industrial cameras since the very beginning in 2012 and develops, integrates, and supports uh, systems for aerial data capture. Mr. Kemper will show us today some insights to his multi sensor integration containing phase one industrial cameras for power line monitoring and inspection. But uh, before I hand over to Mr. Kemper for his presentation, I will do a brief overview of the corporate and products. Uh, once we have finished that, we will have GGS to present and then we'll do a Q&A. So if there is any questions that you have during this webinar presentations, you can type in the message on the question chat box of yeah, of the GoToWebinar uh, tool. And uh, Paula Cooper uh, will then taking care of those questions and at the end uh, <clears throat> will share us uh, uh, to the group of uh, listeners we have uh, so that we can either myself or Mr. Kemper from GGS can answer those questions for you. So, <clears throat> yeah, let me go ahead and begin uh, with the corporate slides. So phase one is a world leading provider of medium format cameras. Uh, we provide ultra high resolution cameras and highly productive software solutions. Phase one industrial focuses as a part of uh, phase one on aerial imaging solutions, machine vision and homeland security applications. Some facts and figures about phase one. We have more than 100,000 satisfied customers in the professional photography, aerial and machine vision market. We are the market leader in medium format imaging and phase one has a worldwide distribution network. We are supporting our customers globally on a 24 seven basis. Um, and yeah, phase one has a highly customer centric and innovative team with more than 25 nationalities. So let's focus on the phase one industrial business unit. As you can see, we have several sales and support centers uh, for industrial across the globe. In North America, it is located in Denver, Colorado and serving the Americans region. In Germany, we are based in Cologne and serving whole Europe, Russia, Africa and Middle East region. And in Hong Kong, we have a sales and support center located uh, in, yeah, in Hong Kong for the Asia and South Pacific region. Our corporate headquarter is located in Denmark, in Copenhagen, where also our main R&D center is located. We have further R&D centers in Israel and as well in Japan. Here you can see an overview of our phase one industrial aerial products, showing the high class lenses with its innovative and reliable RS shutter and ranging from 32 millimeter to 300 millimeter focal lengths for UAV and in inspection purpose, all these lenses also are available with motorized focus. Followed uh, by our range of industrial aerial medium format cameras, uh, starting at 50 megapixel and 100 megapixel resolution in our IXM series cameras for UAV applications, followed by the IXM RS series cameras with 100 megapixel and 150 megapixel resolution, which are also part of our own phase one aerial systems and additional can be found integrated in many aerial image capture systems designed by our integration partners. Uh, and additional, these cameras are also often integrated beside airborne LiDAR systems. Multiple of these cameras can be synchronized together to build a multi-camera array and also are available as RGB and near-infrared cameras. The actual flagship model is a dual sensor IXURS 1900 camera with its 190 megapixel. For recording of images and storage, we have the ruggedized fanless IX controller 
and we have a range of software products to support from flight planning, flight execution, triggering, capturing the images, and working and processing of the images themselves, uh, including combining RGB and near infrared images to a four-band product. With combining all this range of products, we also uh, created the Phase 1 Aerial System, which is available as a turnkey solution, uh, including uh, GNSS IMU options and stabilized uh, mounts. Uh, more you can find out on our website industrial.phase1.com. Let me close my brief introduction to Phase 1 Industrial Aerial Products with a slide uh, showing some typical applications our cameras are used for. It shows uh, good the flexibility our cameras have to help serving the market. Yeah, now it's time for me to turn, all, turn this over to our invited partner, GGS from Germany. Please welcome Dr. Gerhard Kemper from GGS. Uh, he's the CEO of the company. So welcome, Gerhard. Hi, Carsten. Good afternoon, Europe, and good morning, America. <laughs> so I think I can take over the keyboard. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, it's actually me, so I will start with the presentation. I would like to speak today about the multi sensor integration of phase one industrial cameras for power line monitoring. And I want to show some news and innovations in this technology. That's my small agenda. I want to speak shortly about GTS, about our image. What let's say, is our business. Uh, GGS is already 26 years on the market, and we have, uh, meanwhile, a lot of um, yeah, experience in integration of different technologies and experience in the innovation. And we have also some own products around all the sensors to make a proper integration for our customers. What do we have? So we of course have aerial cameras that we integrate, mainly phase one technology. And we have our own product line with different stabilizers in different sizes to support um, a good error triangulation of the images. We develop oblique camera system with five or six phase one cameras. We integrate also specific sensors, for example, LiDAR, hyperspectral sensors, multiband systems and others. And we are quite experienced in the integration of all the sensors together with Genus S and camera technology and to have direct referencing systems. And of course, we have also a certain range of softwares that come along with the sensors to make post-processing, integration, error triangulation and calibration of the different sensor technologies. Our best practice is in research assistance and we have project related developments. So we help our customers to find the right solution for them. We have our own workshop with uh, mechanical drilling machines and 3D printers. We have especially on the hardware side, our own software development to integrate specific sensors with data management and control and link to GNSS INS to get everything synchronized. So signal processing and data conversion on the fly is one part of our goals. So our service is consultation, planning, training, post-processing and maintenance. So we not just deliver the turnkey solution, we also help the customers to operate the system and if they want to upgrade, uh, improve the systems, we are the partner on their life cycle of the system. Since this year, we are also ISO 9001 certified. So it means we have a quality management that takes care about, let's say, good product quality that is important also for our customers. And also to become better with every system we get into the market and with every feedback we get from our customers. We are partner of the science, so we are partner of the German Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing and also of the ISPRS, where we are partner 
and take part on the scientific discussions and developments. We have a big range of partners uh, where we work together. Uh, there is phase one and many other companies that deliver uh, products, sensors, software tools. And we also partner of, uh, for example, Lufthansa, Siemens, and also have funds from the ministries. So coming back to the thematic, what we want to talk about, task for power line inspection. What is typically done today? One thing, one part of the power line observation is of course monitoring for findings. For example, hotspots that is typically done with uh, thermal cameras. We are looking for anomalies, looking for bird nests that can, can become critical for shortcuts in the power lines. Right, way, right of way of the site, so it means vegetation that grows too close to the power lines, kites, balloons, something what we can find inside the power lines, aerial markers, balls, uh, and other inventory on the power line itself, and of course, a very critical part are the insulators of the power lines. Beside that, typical thing is to make a survey of the power line. Um, in our missions, we typically fly right and left of the power line. Some missions are guided directly over the power line. And products that are derived from that is mapping of the corridor, typically about 50 meter left and right of the middle line of the power line, generate of the laser scanner a digital surface model, extract the terrain model by the second or last pulse information, from that extract vegetation information and of course make further analysis, get the author photo of the high resolution camera, uh, extract the power line and the conductors, the poles and all the information. That's the survey part. Typically today you have a setup of one to two mapping cameras mounting, mounted Nadia or oblique view, laser scanning for DTM and DSM and vegetation detection, and as shown also to look for thermal anomalies, the thermal cameras. That's a very typical setup with a yeah, typical resolution. Mission, mission heights are typically about 30 to 50 meter above the poles, means something like 50 to 150 meter above ground on average. A laser scan density of 30 to 60 points. RGB camera with a resolution typically one to two centimeters and oblique. Yeah, of course, with a big range of a half centimeter to 10 centimeters and the thermal observations typically five to 10 centimeters because yeah, the thermal cameras typically have a very small resolution. But what is requested now from one of our great partners for automated detection with artificial intelligence to looking for defects or findings. So that is what we typically have today. So we have only a relatively unaccurate observation. It goes very slow. Very often we have manual work on the data set. And of course the missions that are typically annually made for the observation are risky. So we are looking for better precision make it faster, make automatic detection and evaluation, make it integrated, safer, and more cost effective. One part that is, let's say, the part of GTS is a multi-sensor system integration that uh, integrates RGB cameras, ultraviolet cameras, 3D laser scanning, and thermal infrared. And this data should enter algorithms or artificial intelligence means fully automated data extraction, data analysis using cloud computer and let's say comes in the future to a long range UOV technology to make also the mission itself more or less automated. But it has a certain request. So it means we need higher resolution data to get the algorithms running well. And we have integrated 500 megapixel camera LiDAR 3D scanners, corona sensors, infrared sensors, and this one leads 
to uh, automatic process or automatic identification and classification of components. So it means get information about the inventory on the poles and resulting in all this data analysis. So let's coming to the multi-sensor setup, what we have designed here. First of all, we need a new improved flight management system using snake lines. So we don't want to have single lines that we have to enter again and again. So we want to make, let's say, flying on the snake line. So we have improved our own flight management system. Central is, of course, to have a genus as INS system that brings all the information from the different sensors together and uh, make the direct georeferencing and co-registering possible of all the different sensor data. We have a setup of five phase 100 megapixel cameras, two looking forward in oblique, two looking backward in oblique, and one looking nadir for the auto photo generation. We have a setup of four thermal cameras to capture the entire pole in a certain accuracy. We have a very fast corona camera uh, to, in combination with a monitoring camera to see where we find, let's say, the discharge spikes of the power line. We have a laser scanner, in that case, the Regal books long range. And of course, to store all this data, we need a proper data management that collects all the data for the later post-processing. Multi-sensor mission planning. So, of course, we have the line of the poles. We need information of the poles because we are looking for the isolators for the inventory. We, we extract automatically, let's say, the position of the poles. We come along, take the analysis of the analysis of the cameras to get the right footprints on the right place. And this one guides to a mission plan that shows us the trigger points for the cameras to capture all the facilities we find on the power line. As mentioned, we have improved our flight management system. That's a pilot screen in the helicopter. And this one is, let's say, the innovation so we can fly, as you can see here, the snake lines. So the pilot starts here, directly flies a curve, and the system is continuously working, and he has all the information he needs about the speed, about the um, place to change the flight direction, and all other information he needs for a proper flight. Coming to the phase one camera, in the system I show today, we have integrated five phase one IXU RS cameras. We have the upper cameras are, uh, with a 90 millimeter lens. So this gives a resolution of 1.5 to 2.5 millimeter GSC on the power line. And the lower cameras have 110 millimeter that result in the same GSD. For the Nadia camera, this one is slightly oblique because we are flying beside the power line. We have a 50 millimeter lens, so this results in a four to eight millimeter GSD. It means a millimeter on the ground for vegetation detection. We integrate also multi uh, thermal camera system. So we have integrated four FLIR thermal microbolometer cameras with a 50 meter, millimeter lens. This gives us a GSD of 10 to 25 millimeters. That's already a high resolution. And these cameras are synchronized and running on the GPS, PPS level. A very interesting and let's say challenging part was the integration of a Corona camera. You can see here a discharge on an isolator. It means we have here a certain failure, so something is not working proper and we are searching for such effects. And typically, it's not enough just to observe the ultraviolet band, so you have to filter the daylight information. And we combine it with the RGB monitoring camera that sees what where we find, let's say, this single photons, this single discharges 
that are just like a blob on a black and white on mostly black image and we just see a single spike so we have to know what the ultraviolet camera is seeing we capture with a 50 hertz capture rate we do a binning to be fast and we geotag the single frames into the storage this one is a setup you can see here the ultraviolet camera combined with the thermal camera and here we have all those thermal, uh, the ultraviolet and the thermal camera combined here and this one is one of the results an overlay of the spikes shown here as white on an rgb image which comes from the monitoring camera so we see here that the eye in the later has some defects And of course, LiDAR is a very important zone. We integrated the Regal laser scanner VUX long range. We are using two MTA zones for capturing. And in the two flights beside the line, we capture up to 400 points per square meter. And we use, of course, a full waveform information that the laser scanner is generating, especially for the vegetation detection. What we get here is of course, a point, the points that represent the power line itself. So it means the, the rope. And we extract a catenary line out of these points. And this one leads up to the information sack of the cable distance. So we have the possibility out of the point cloud, which is extremely dense, what you can see here, to extract here uh, really the poly poly lines and information in vector format how looks this sensor integration so this one is a helicopter and outside in a pot we have integrated all the sensors in one housing on the same plate so that the genus is ins is capable to combine all the information for a proper geocoding mission outcome and examples that's a part of the of the team of siemens they develop the artificial intelligence to analyze out of this data automatically all this information what we get here they automatic extract and find the insulators vibration dampers spacers and get the inventory of all these components here you can see a detail out of that. And of course, in the combination with the RGB image and the laser scan data, you get overlaid the vectorized information of the, of the laser point cloud in combination with the RGB image. And of course, what we are looking for are findings, defects. Here automatically found is on the glass isolator. That is something which is quite difficult. Um, especially the glass insul insulators, uh, worse than the ceramic isolators, you get here this kind of findings. Automatically extracted by the software tools. Here are some other findings here on the ceramic isolators. And here you find also different defects on isolators here's some examples what we're doing with the, the thermal cameras and the corona cameras here you can see a thermal image you can see here hot spots and in combination with the corresponding rgb image you find the information and you know where to look deeper into the data also here you see a thermal hotspot and we are looking here on the line you see that one of this uh, cables might have a defect. This one is an example of one of these uh, ultraviolet images. So you see single blobs and by this special camera that can be amplified, you can see even single photons, but you see here a very strong discharge. And this one is another example of different discharging overlaid over the RGB data set. Siemens has developed a quite nice tool that comes out with a result and gives a report for the final customer. And they offer that as a service. And meanwhile, they are operational. Yeah, the future is to make, let's say, the system and sensor integration smaller. 
meter and to do it on a yeah on a UAV basis. I hope it works that I can show you a small video, but I can't hear the sound. You can see here the sensor setup. And here you can see how you come from the laser point cloud into the machine learning and automatic detection of the failures. And here you're going for the UAV. Sorry that the sound didn't work, not at my computer. So finally, I'm at the end of my presentation and thanks a lot. Yeah, so thank you, Gerhard, uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, so, yeah, I personally could hear the sound well uh, of everything. So I hope the audience had the same experience. Um, and yeah, now I'm looking forward uh, to some questions. Um, yeah, Paula, do, did you receive some questions for the presentation? Um, I, I just got a couple in. Um... Most of it was covered, I think, but one is why is the Corona camera capturing with a 50 hertz frame rate? Um, yeah, because of power lines um, and the frequency of um, the DC voltage is typically also around 50 hertz. It means if there is a discharge, it might be synchronized with the alternation of the power lines. So that's why we try to capture with the same rate to be sure that we capture even single discharges. Okay, thank you. Uh, then there was just, there was another one. Uh, why is a forward and backward view of the cameras needed? Uh, yeah, we found out that um, to, to have a good view on the ice insulators, we need these forward and backward uh, images to have a proper detection with the automated algorithms. So we, you know, there is always one insulator covers the other insulator, the pole itself and the cables, they typically cover a part of the insulator. So what we're doing is to capture with a high capture rate of 0.7 seconds between the images. So we have a huge overlap and we are doing that in forward and backward to be sure that we have got all informations of the, of the insulators. That's why forward and backward. It's a huge data volume, but uh, that enables the automatic algorithms to work well. All right, we've got lots more questions coming in. What is What was the resolution of the Corona camera? Uh, the Corona camera itself has a re resolution because it's oblique view, something about five to 10 centimeters. But uh, you know, so such a discharge can be seen, let's say like a cloud blowing up so we don't need a uh, extreme high resolution more important is to have it proper combined with the rgb camera that we can detect where this let's say discharge cloud is okay uh what is the approximate flight speed of, of these these inspection flights oh Okay, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. sorry, I couldn't hear you there. What is the approximate flight speed of inspection flight? Um, the typical flight, average flight speed is about 30 kilometers per hour. So the, uh, let's say the model or the idea of the business model is to capture about 100 kilometer power line a day with flying on both sides, forward and backward. Okay. Another question saying, um, ortho photo creation from oblique images, is this possible? Um, it's possible uh, to, it means to extract, let's say the pole and the, the, the power line. Yeah, it's, it's even better than just from the Nadia, but uh, from mathematic point of view and for the algorithm, it's uh, let's say a bit more tricky. But even the accuracy in the 3D measurement is far better than just with the oblique, uh, just with a Nadia camera. Okay, there's a there's a couple that probably relate to each other. One says, "How do you stabilize such a large group of different sensors?" 
and then another one that says why is the lidar mounted in such a weird angle <laughs> um yeah okay so all the sensors are on the very solid uh, stable plate mounted to each other so they are let's say solid mounted to each other combined with the lidar scanner so we are sure that let's say all the sensors are stable as stable as it's as needed and in the case we are flying relatively deep, um, let's say small deformations uh, don't take really, don't influence too much, let's say the final accuracy and the core registering of the sensors. But anyway, we do a core registering uh, by let's say tie point matching between LiDAR and the different cameras as well. So we have a relatively stability and also a quite good uh, absolute stability by let's say the mounting. Uh, another question is why we mounted the LiDAR scanner in that angle, looking let's say also forward and sideward. Um, yet it's quite simple because um, let's say this uh, LiDAR scanner is scanning let's say in a circle and we are flying beside the power line so we don't need let's say the circle left of the helicopter so that's why we are rotating the laser scanner a bit to the right that we have more let's say on the scan uh, circle on the power line and we tilt the laser scanner to have let's say an uh, intersection into the pole that we get a better representation of the single metal strips and everything okay uh someone says um what benefit did the phase one cameras bring to the project did it have to be phase one in there uh, we need high resolution and we have to have fast cameras and they have to be uh, metric because otherwise we cannot that easily let's say combine the image information with the LiDAR information and we are capturing all five cameras with a interval of 0.7 seconds so it means they have to be fast on the first part they have to be accurate for a, let's say photogrammetric processing and of course they have to have the high resolution and uh, yeah we need the, the best landers on the market and uh, that's uh, why we use phase one uh, next question is what is the point of the full waveform for the lidar uh, to detect the different let's say levels of the vegetation for the power line itself we get let's say the first pulse that's that's fine that's that's enough but for the vegetation identification, it's uh, important to have full waveform, at least two or three echoes back from the ground for a proper vegetation indication. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one more. The platform seems to be open without any cover. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. have to land in case of bad weather? Uh, that's true. That's uh, where we work on an improvement because during the development of the sensor, we integrated more and more sensors. So let's say this pot is too small. So we grown out actually. What we are doing is to build up a new case that we can cover it. But anyway, we are flying during good weather because when it's raining, we can't do a LiDAR scanning. And uh, But you're right, during let's say the ferry flights, we should have a closed box. Okay. Um... What is the shutter speed for the front and back RGB cameras? We use a two thousandth of a second. Okay. I think you might have answered this one with the description. Are the forward and backward cameras set slightly obliquely since they are being flown slightly offline? Yeah, so they are rotated to the right because we are looking slightly forward and backward and uh, of course uh, to the right hand side. Lots of questions there for you, Gerhard. I think that's it for now, though. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks okay. a lot. Yeah. Thanks once more, Gerhard, for for joining this today's webinar, and for all your explanations uh, you you did. And yeah, for all the audience, thanks for joining in, and looking forward to see you on the next webinar as well. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. <laughs>